Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Pastor Winston Watson, and this is Morning Prayer Live, coming to you from St. Mary, this beautiful parish on the island of Jamaica. And I'm going to say this. Last night, while I was lying, I don't know if you felt it, but there was an aftershock. I felt... <laughs> I was asleep. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. I, I got to tell you something. I got to tell, I got to tell our Trey. I mean, he came in yesterday... <laughs> And, I mean, he was in a total... T I'll just give him a little bit about your experience yesterday. You know, we do spiritual things, but yeah, we also yeah, do yeah. manual things. Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, I had the opportunity to learn how to lay a roof down here in Jamaica. I learned it is no joke. <laughs> um, I was in the sun. I was moving buckets, pouring cement. It, it was a lot. And when I got home, I just went straight to sleep. <laughs> So, I did not know there was an aftershock. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, my God. I tell you, um, it, is, it is interesting. Uh, what he's doing, by the way, so you know, uh, there, uh, there's a young couple in our church. And um, the young man is building this house. And he's been building it for about a year now. And he's been doing it, a lot of it, by himself. I went, we went the other day and we bought windows. <clears throat> so, you know, for the house, and it was interesting, you know, that someone helped him to get the windows, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we picked <laughs> it up, and he put in his windows, he put in his doors, <clears throat> you know, in, in one part of the house. Now he's putting the, the roof on another part of the house. And it's just incredible to see. I mean, he works day and night, if possible. I don't know where he gets the energy from. <clears throat> maybe that's why this youngster is as slim, you know, as a stick, <laughs> but maybe that's why he just has more energy than anybody that I know. But he, they're building their home, and, uh, you know, what they, his, 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 you know, other half works, you know, out of Jamaica, and it's just amazing to see how they cooperate and how they work together in getting this done, my God. And uh, it's not, they don't go to the bank. <coughs> they don't get, <coughs> they don't go to the bank, they don't get a mortgage, they don't hire a big contractor, you know, um, they do it, a lot of it, by themselves. I have several young people that are like that, and uh, I'm going to ask you to pray. One of our members, I got notification last night from um, her daughter that her home burned to the ground. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, one of our members here and uh, uh, sister, one of our sisters. And so I'm asking you to pray for her. Uh, and uh, I will give you some more details later. I haven't spoken to her yet <coughs> because her, apparently her phone was in the house. And so I can't get to her directly. So we are trying to get you know connected to one of her children to see what's going on with her, amen? But um, can you imagine that this is you know, a situation that's affecting one of our own. Anyway, this morning, I know I got a note from my dear sister in London that she's going to be with us. Miss Nita is on from Wright City, Missouri. My dear, I cannot miss the fact that you and, <coughs> you and, <coughs> excuse me, forgive me, my throat is just really acting up, but I can't miss the fact that my dear sister um, Nita is coming on from Missouri this morning and you know with her husband uh, but God is so good to us regardless of the situations that confront us and 
you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to see his presence and his ability to work in every situation of life that confronts us. Amen? My God. Now remember, please pray for Sister Hanny. You know, like I said, her home, you know, it seems, uh, again, I don't have first-hand information from her. This is second-hand, actually, from one of my other youngsters, um, one of the police officers in Kingston, that called me to tell me that this home burnt to the ground um, a day or so ago. <clears throat> and so she has lost just about everything. And so we'll, as I said, we'll follow up with you about that. But this morning, again, I want to talk and finish the discussion that we've been having. <clears throat> excuse me. The discussion that we've been having about, uh, you know, about the general's scars. And each morning, we have not really used those words but I want to talk about something this morning that covers the, the, the general scars. And if you look at your um, the highlighted subject, you'll see it says divine design. What do I mean by that? Divine design. You know, a lot of us, when we get into a uh, relationship with Christ, or over time, what happens to us is that we get fat on the word or we get fat on religion mm -hmm. and we get complacent with where we are and who we are with. We get to the place where we don't want to do anything on the outside of the four walls of our experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he's getting a chance to do some things that I don't think he ever thought he would do. <clears throat> and so have I, you know, over the years. But, but I wonder where you are today with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about your salvation. You're born again. You're walking with him. But have you entered into his divine design for your life? Hmm? Hmm. Have you really entered into that? Have you decided that God, I'm going to follow you. I want to quit talking about tongues. I'm going to quit talking about you know, the power of revelation. I'm going to quit talking about the prophetic and I'm going to quit talking about the apostolic and I'm going to quit talking. I'm going to do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we are good talkers. Unfortunately, sometimes, Trey, we're not good walkers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we really need to decide we need to decide, and, and, and this kind of comes from some things that I've been reading and looking at, because we love to say people need help, but we don't realize that God says, these are the hands to help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the mouth to encourage. <coughs> they, these are the feet. Listen to what the word says. <coughs> Your feet, my feet, Trey's feet, our feet brings the good news. My God. So do we sit around excited about something that really has no... And many years ago, the Lord gave me this little phrase <clears throat> um, in a message. Your actions, your life has and should have eternal significance, not momentary significance. An act that you do in someone's life of eternal significance lasts. A word you give to someone of eternal significance lasts. It brings someone into divine design. There's a, there's a, um, a singer uh, that went to Africa and when she went to Africa, an American singer, I, I, I found her about 20 years ago, uh, the, little, the old cassette tapes. Mm -hmm. I felt the Lord told me to go to this music store one day I was driving and he said go to this music store and there's something there for you and I didn't know what it was so I went and they were having a sale and there were these old cassettes that they had on the outside <coughs> so I was going through them and uh, I went through and I picked up this one cassette a couple of them but this one in particular I picked up and it was interesting she in the song Danny Bell that's her name Danny Bell uh, when I picked up this, this, this tape and I went into the car and I had a tape player in the car so I put it in 
And she was singing the song that she went to Africa to teach Africans about God. Hmm. And she was going to go and she was going to lead them in worship and she was going to do all kinds of things. And then she gave a testimony. She says, when she saw, when she got into the church, she saw, or the area where she was, she said, I saw 10,000 upraised hands. She did not have to influence them to raise their hands. They were already divinely designed to worship and they knew it. Let's step in to God's divine design this morning. We have been sitting on our hands too long. Let's begin to raise it. We have been sitting back because we feel that we can't do anything. You can do something. You can get out there to a nursing home. You can get out there, you know, um, in the parking lot. You can. I've been in Walmart. <clears throat> you know, as crazy as they have videos about Walmart, folks. I've been in Walmart. I've been standing in the line. I've turned to people. I've been walking through. I was in a restaurant in, Al in Atlanta. And uh, it was some friend of ours, Peter. And his wife took me out to lunch. So I'm walking. This is a great barbecue place. <laughs> and I'm walking back to make my order. And a lady comes walking towards me. And the Spirit of the Lord says, say this and this and this to her <clears throat> in Atlanta, Georgia. Hmm. And I said, I would have walked over to her and I said, do you mind if I share something with you? Because, you know, I didn't know. Right, they might look at you. I don't know <laughs> what the reaction is going to be. <laughs> so I said, do you mind if I share something with you? And, I, uh, and she said, no. And so I began to share what the Lord said. And she looked, the look on her face was, how do you know this? <laughs> In Atlanta, Georgia. Come on, people. There is something for you to get up and do. You're not just a housewife. You're not just someone that goes on a job nine to five or eight to four or whatever your schedule is. You are not just in the earth to take up space. There's a divine design about your life this morning and you need to enter the atmosphere that God has placed before you. <clears throat> this is an opportunity for you to step. Trey has stepped into something. Hmm? Many of you have stepped into something, but you're reluctant to take that leap of faith. We're reading from Hebrews 11 this morning, and I'd like you to go to verse 6. I'm going to ask Trey to read it again. <coughs> verse 6 of Hebrews 11. This is in the Passion Translation. <coughs> And without faith living within us, <clears throat> excuse me, it would be impossible to please God. For we come to God in faith, mm -hmm. knowing that he is real and that he rewards the faith of those who give their passion and strength into seeking him. <laughs> your passion and your strength, my God. What are you doing this morning? I don't, I, I mean, you might be in England, London, England this morning. You might be in Australia this morning. You, you might be some place that I have never heard of. I mean, there are people that have sent me messages from places. That I, I, I mean, years ago, maybe when I did geography in primary school, <coughs> those, the names of those places came, you know, up in, 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 in discussion. But I've not heard of them in years. But God is calling you into action. You know, when I was in my teens and I lived in New York City, I got a letter, a draft letter. And I was um, called, you know, to, to, to get into the military. Mm -hmm. um, but God has issued a divine summons, a divine letter to you. Submit. Mm -hmm. This morning, will you say, yes, Lord, use me? Will you say, you know, you, you have issues with, sickness and you have issues with mental challenges and you have issues with relationship challenges and you have allowed those things how many of you got us called to the mission field but you're just sitting because he has he has issued the call mm -hmm. but because of circumstances that you've allowed 
You have never stepped out. You have never stepped in. You have never allowed the knock to give you the impetus mm -hmm. to open the door. Mm -hmm. But we can't live that way anymore, my friends. We have got to move this morning into divine design and thus divine purpose and divine destiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Divine design, divine purpose, and divine destiny. Last evening as I lay there and I was thinking about what we were going to speak about this morning, and this just, just welled up in my spirit. <clears throat> I actually was watching some young man on, you know, two of them that they were just coming against the church. They are Christians, by the way. They were ministers, and they were just coming against the church and coming against music industry. I'm talking about Christian music industry, and saying you used the, you 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 cited a quote yesterday from is it Bill Johnson? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, so he was talking about Bill Johnson and how Bill Johnson was, but Johnson was a crazy man, and, and he was way, he, he was his word a wacko <clears throat> and things. And I'm saying to myself. You have no better thing to do than to come against your brother in Christ. Why don't you pray for him? <clears throat> you see, some of us are being used as ploys of the enemy, as pawns of the enemy to destroy the very church from within. But well, what about you this morning? Are you ready to take a trip to Jamaica? Did you hear me? Are you ready? to take a trip to Jamaica to go visit somebody in the infirmary you never heard of. Someone that after you leave, they will die. But because of your influence, your embrace, you're taking a spoon of something and putting it in their mouth, your hug, you're rubbing their arms with, with some lotion, your prayer over them, they will go into their divine destiny, into eternity with a grace from heaven because of you. What about what God has called you to do? Sister Harper, Patricia Harper, um, I see her on this morning um, from London. Now, you think about Sister Harper. I mean, we went to school together. You know, we were in second grade together. <clears throat> and Sister Harper came from London to Jamaica, lived right in this home for, you know, for a few weeks and walked around with us and did things with us, mm -hmm. planted with us. You know, actually some of the banana plants we have in the back, she helped to put in the ground and walked and prayed about the ground in the back. And now, Sister Harper, guess what, Miss Patricia, we are able I, I cut up bananas, brand, you know, we cut them off the other day and cut them up in, in like sixes and sevens and we were handing them out, not selling them, we were handing them out to families. Mm. People were just coming and getting things, you know, on Sunday and during the prior week because they could get something to eat they didn't have to pay for because mm. someone had sown the seed mm. and the effort mm. <coughs> to give to them. Are you ready, my friends, to even financially support a ministry like ours? Are you ready because you can't come, because you can't necessarily do it by your hands or with your hands? Are you really, are you really, really tied in to what God is moving in your heart to do in this season of the earth and in the season of your destiny. Do you want an earthquake <laughs> to wake us up? <clears throat> and I think that was a wake up call to all of us. Mm -hmm. 1692, there was a wake up call to Port Royal, to Jamaica through Port Royal and the Caribbean. 1907, there was another wake up call. And none of those earthquakes were as powerful and they said in 1907, every building in Kingston was damaged in some way. Hmm. What about us today? Do we need an earthquake, maybe a spiritual quake, to shake us out of complacency, to shake us 
into destiny, to shake us into fulfilling our life's purpose as designed by the Almighty God, my God. Mr. Templeton, or Miss, you know, it says Willie, but so, senior, so that would be a male. Um, Brother Willie Templeton, I see him coming on. Brother Willie, step into destiny. My friends this morning, step into destiny. <clears throat> God is calling you to step out into deep waters this morning. My God. That's good. Well, <clears throat> something that I heard, you know, back home um, about, you know, just stepping out in faith, it, it's kind of like jumping into a cold pool, <laughs> which some people, you know, you may not want to do that. But if you're young like me, you know, and you want to go swim, it doesn't matter if it's cold or not. You just want to swim. Uh. And you can't you know, step down the step ladder because it's going to, you know, freeze your feet. Mm -hmm. So the best way to get into a cold pool is you just got to jump in. And once you jump in, you know, you, you just accept what's around you. Um, and another thing is like when I played football, our coach always told us, always told us that we can't just go through the motions because if we go through the motions in practice, once we play the game, we're just going to be outmatched. We're going to mm -hmm. be outmanned. We're going to be outplayed, whatever you want to say. And so it really does matter because when you go do these things like going to church or you might be helping out on this or you might be doing this on a Saturday, um, your heart has to be in it because you can be in it and your heart's not in it because you can just be going mm -hmm. through the motions and you can just be doing it, <coughs> checking this off, checking that off. So it's really important. And you really got to search yourself because, you know, those things do matter when your heart's in it. Mm. And, you know, God sees that. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, I mean, he just take that leap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like here in Jamaica, a lot of us don't have hot water <laughs> <laughs> in the bathrooms. And so you can, you know, kind of put a hand in there and you feel like you're freezing. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, I, I'm glad you said that, yeah. you know, um, or you put a foot in there, <laughs> you feel it. But sometimes it's better to just go, yeah. push yourself right under it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's, a sh it's an initial shock, but then it becomes refreshing. My God. Mm. Um, Isaac says, Trey, thanks for reminding me of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Kathy, um, Heidler, Kathy, Kathy. Step into it, my God. <clears throat> I have a, a little note here that I got from the meeting in Amarillo. It says, we are not here to appease God, for he has appeased himself. He has already satisfied himself, and he has invited us in. Hmm. The invitation stands. The invitation is issued. Are you ready? Yes, Lord use me <clears throat> yes lord i am ready yes lord move upon me you don't need any more anointing than you have you know you're waiting for anointing to flow you're already anointed if you have the spirit of god if you're a christian you're already anointed <clears throat> you already have good words if you don't know the entire Bible, forget about that. I'm not talking about you memorizing the entire Bible. I'm talking about you having an intimate relationship with God. Mm -hmm. He will bring whatever you need to your heart. Ministry is from the heart, not from the head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love is from the heart, not from the head. My God. And so I want to encourage you this morning. You know, faith. Faith, and this is, another, this is another note from my Amarillo, November Amarillo visit. <clears throat> it says faith, and sometimes these things for years you have them sitting there, and then you pick them up and you begin to read. Mm -hmm. That's why I gave you that notebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you begin to read. Faith is a matter of volition. It's a choice, a personal choice to trust. Mm -hmm. Faith is a matter of what? Of volition. 
I choose to do it. <clears throat> I want to step into it. By the way, nothing is perfect on the outside, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, people may not agree with me, but I'm going to do it anyway. My God, my friends, this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I reach my hands out in the atmosphere of the lives that are watching us today, and I decree and I declare that the power and the majesty of God is moving, the Lord God, in their hearts and in their minds and in the yes. circumstances of their life. Yes. I thank you, Father, for motivation today that far exceeds any other sense of motivation, spiritual motivation, Lord God, of days before or years before. <clears throat> that there is, Lord God, an earnestness. Mm -hmm. There is, Lord God, ah, my God, ah, Kotorobo, an influence mm -hmm. unparalleled in their lives. Father, to thrust them. <clears throat> to thrust them into divine design, divine purpose, and divine destiny. Mm -hmm. My God, my God, my God, my God. Father, let those that have been in the back, they've been in the back, they've been on the outskirts of the camp, let them be thrust for, forth to the front. Yes. Those that are obscure, unknown, thrust them into their destinies, Lord God. Let divine purpose be fulfilled in their lives this morning and in the days ahead. Father, let them put on their calendars, Father, the next trip, preferably to Jamaica, but Father God, whatever it is you've called them to do. Mm -hmm. And Lord God, I just thank you that we get out of entertainment mission trips. Mm. <laughs> hey, woo! Mm. And vacation mission trips. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we get into purposeful, come build something, the Lord says. Hey, come heal somebody, the Lord says. Come motivate somebody. Come feed somebody. Come love on somebody. <clears throat> but we go to places to be entertained and to view historical sites and all of that stuff. No, nah, that's good. That's vacation. The Apostle Paul, when he went on his missionary journeys, he did not go to view the historic sites. He went to declare the presence of God. He went to heal the sick, raise the dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God. And that's the mandate. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord said. Go. Preach the gospel, heal the sick, and raise the dead. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to step in faith, to walk in the powerful message of salvation, <clears throat> to walk in the powerful anointing of healing, and to walk with the miracle working power of raising the dead? We haven't entered that atmosphere, many of us. We haven't stepped into that, many of us. But the Lord is saying, and he said it. I wonder if he remembers it. You know, we talked a few days ago. He said it, and we have echoed it. The Lord is asking you to come with me. <laughs> He's saying, come with me. Jesus is saying, come with me. Come with me. I don't want you to go by yourself. Come with me. I think it's in like Exodus 33 where Moses was talking to God and uh, Moses said, uh, the Lord told Moses to go up and do something and Moses said, I ain't going unless you go. <laughs> you don't have to use that expression. I'm not going anywhere, God, unless you go with me. <clears throat> and then he says to God, God, not only do I want you to go with me, but I want to see your glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Lord listened to Moses. The glory of God is available to you this morning. The presence of God is available to you this morning. Jump on it, my friend. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All symptoms are canceled. You all have a great day, Sister Satasha. <laughs> oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to ask Trey to pray to close off this morning. It seems like the time just ran away this morning. But I, I have a sense that Trey is listening in his inner man. You see, my friends, what happens, you know, um, the inner man begins to get excited. And when the inner man gets excited, sometimes the outer man looks reflective. That is, you can see him reflecting on things and thinking through things. You can see him kind of ruminating in the presence of the glory of majesty. And I know many of you this morning are doing the same thing. You're thinking about what God has put on the inside of you. You're thinking about that giant that's about to rise on the inside of you. And that giant that's about to leap forward and to grab a hold of divine destiny. Trey. <clears throat> oh, Father you? God, I just... Um... I thank you for everybody yes. tuning in today because mm. they, they didn't have to. Mm. God, I thank you for everybody that's going to tune in. God, I just pray for safety as they go about yes. their day, yes. going to work or, or school or dropping their kids off or whatever yes. it may be. Um, and God, I, I thank you that you have a call on every single one of our lives. God, I just release your boldness. God, I release your braveness and your courage over us. God, that we've made step into that and once we're into that we're running with it god and um i thank you that you you paved the way for us god all we really have to do is just follow you in that and god i just lift everybody up to you god i pray that whatever that need may be god that you meet that i come into agreement with that and you know the stories you know the cases god if people are needing healing god i release your healing over them god if people are needing a breakthrough god i come into agreement with them that thing that that thing will break and god i thank you for everybody in jesus name amen amen, amen. again i'm pastor winston watson this is trey Eck, and we are on morning prayer live Thank you so much for your continued support financially and in prayer. And we look forward to hearing from you. May God bless you. Enter your weekend in praise. Amen.